But when, when, the, when the Islamic uh, warrior, Saladin, conquered the Crusaders mm-hmm. and took control of Jerusalem, all right, he entered into an agreement that, that, th- that the Muslims would protect the Christian churches. And so he appointed two Muslim families. Both of these families had been in Jerusalem for, uh, you know, close to a thousand years. And each generation has passed down the key, the key, right? The, the physical key. Mr. Um, Judah said that the key he presently has is 800 years old. Mm, it's incredible. He and had another key, but it broke. <laughs> and this is a Muslim. I mean, yes. Adbi Judah is, is a Muslim. And he said it's also it's a great honor for a Muslim to hold the key to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is the most important church in Christendom. That's not disrespect. That's, See, we, we don't that hear this in America. Country. We don't hear because what what we have been told is Christians, Christian Americans, and uh, you know you you should hate Muslims. You should kill Muslims because they they're going to tear down all the churches yes. and and. and uh, you know, basically just ransack them and everything else. But here we have two families that for nearly a thousand years have actually been watching over. Yes. Christian churches. That's right. So who planted into our minds here in America that we should hate and kill Muslims? Who planted that thought in our head? Because it, it came into our society after 9-11. That's correct. So 9-11 was a calculated uh, uh, planned operation, and it changed everything in our country. And so we were saturated with media propaganda, which who owns the media in this country? So we we're saturated with this media propaganda. You Americans, you need to hate Muslims. You need to go to war. You need to send your sons to go kill Muslims. All right. And yet when you go to the Middle East, you find out that the Muslims l- like Christians. Um, are taking care of Christian churches. Yes. Do not hold animosity against Christians or Americans, uh, uh, except in the case where Americans are pushing for war in their countries or right. trying to take their land. So they've lived together. They've lived together for centuries and centuries. Jews, Christians, and Muslims have lived together for centuries. They were buying and selling. They were trading. They were doing business together. They were building houses next door to each other for centuries. And it didn't change until the Zionists came. Now, see, wait a minute. I thought Zionists are Jews. They are, not all Jews are Zionists. And not all Zionists are Jews. Right. Zionism is a political movement. Yes. Right. It's an ideology. Yes. yes. Not an ethnicity. And so when the Zionists came to Jerusalem and, and Palestine Basically, in the 1920s and 30s and 40s, all right, they came to agitate. They came to, to infiltrate. They came to seize control. And so they, they formed uh, paramilitary groups, Ergen. Right, like Ergon. And that's where Ariel Sharon and Menachem Beg and these guys were young terrorists. And so there's where the hatred started to come in. The, the fighting, the animosity, the bitterness. But it, 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 it didn't start until the Zionists appeared. Jews, Muslims, and Christians were coexisting. Yes. That's right. And you feel the presence of Omar ibn al-Khattab. There's a masjid there called Masjid Omar, right next to a church where they say Jesus had descended up into the... Anyway, it's a very, very, very famous place. When Omar ibn al-Khattab came and he took the keys of Jerusalem, he handed back the keys of the church to the Christians. Look at the justice of Islam. He handed the keys back. So they said, listen, if the keys stay with us, we'll go to war over it. So leave the keys with you. Those keys are still in the hands of that Muslim family. And every single morning, that Muslim family goes to the church and opens it up for them. Still to today. When Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, when he conquered, when he conquered, there was a place there where the there was a place there where the Christians believed that Jesus descended to the heavens, and there's a rock where they believe that there's a footprint there. That place became a masjid. Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi he allowed them to visit them. He allowed them to visit that place. 
He opened it to the Christians. He built a masjid away from there so he couldn't prevent them. And one day of the year, he gives them the whole place. And this still takes place to today. This is the justice of Islam. This is the justice of Islam. Wallahi, there are so many, so many experiences that I wish that I wish I could share with you, but my time is short. But finally, the reality is, is that they want you to forget about Palestine. And that's the truth. They don't want you, they don't want your money, they don't want your tourism, they want nothing. You and this place needs to finish. And so long as this place is not in the eyes of the Muslims, it's not in the hearts of the Muslims, then for them this is good. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it we know so little about Palestine? I'll end with this. This, this was a request of the Imam of Masjid Al-Quds. He said to me, please go back and tell the youth of Islam to come and visit this place. He said, come and visit. My brothers and sisters, over the next following few Mondays, Shaykh is going to be giving intense 